Hi guys and welcome to your weekly horoscope. Thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure to be with you today as always. Before I get into the astrology, I just want to talk about a couple of things. First of all, someone mentioned in the comments recently that um, there are lots of ads on my videos. Now, I wasn't aware of this. I really don't like ads myself, so I signed up for YouTube Premium. By the way, if you hear noise in the background, that's Bob um, licking a plate. He's so well behaved. <laughs> um, I don't like ads myself. So I signed up for YouTube Premium so I wouldn't have to see ads. But for people who watch my videos and who aren't signed up for YouTube Premium, I made sure that there were only banner ads um, and one banner ad at the beginning of the video. Now, I think YouTube has changed the way ads are done. And I signed out of my account and I looked at one of my videos. and I was horrified to see that there are six or seven ads on there. I mean, I don't like ads, so I'm not going to make anyone else watch them. Um, so I will sort that out. Leave it with me, please. Uh, please excuse me. I wasn't aware that that was happening. The other thing is that obviously you hear Bob who lives up in the Peak District and you can see that I'm in a different environment here. I have sold my flat in Glastonbury. So bye bye Glastonbury. I'm kind of gutted because I love that flat. And um, yeah, no more Glastonbury. But it's really time for me to move on and to make some changes. So I will keep you posted when I know more. There's lots of kind of logistical stuff going on, obviously, with the lockdowns and stuff. So I'll keep you guys posted. And um, yeah, if Bob makes a lot of noise, then please excuse me. He's walking around and licking plates and doing all sorts of things. All right, so let's get into the astrology. This is your horoscope for Monday the 12th of April, going through until Sunday the 18th of April. And I'm going to go through each day to give you an idea of what's going on this week and how the energy impacts you. And starting with Monday the 12th of April, we've got a new moon in Aries. And I find that really funny because the new moon in Aries, I've made a separate video on that, check that out. But it's really all about taking action and saying, what's my life about and how can I um, live my best possible life? And I'm actually moving during this. So I find that very fitting because I made the decision to move a long time ago. And oh my, in England, <laughs> It took me four months to sell the place. So I wasn't sure that it was going to fall on this weekend, that the exchange and the completion would be done. But it just happened to fall on this weekend, which is really perfect because it's under the influence of the new moon in Aries. So I'm galvanized into action, ready to go. I'm also scared half to death on another level, but yeah, let's not go there. So on Monday the 12th, we've got this new moon in Aries. If you're in Europe or if you're in Africa, or in um, Australia, New Zealand, or Asia. If you're in North or South America, it's late at night on the 11th of April. So just be aware of that. I always mention this, and I mentioned this in that separate video I did on the new moon, that the energy lasts for a couple of days. So it's not like one second on the 12th. I It will influence you the 10th, 11th, 12th, and even 13th of April. And um, if you want to know what that is all about, then check out that separate video. Um, on top of the new moon, we've got the Aries moon then forming a conjunction with Venus in Aries. So the planet of love and beauty in the sign of the ram saying, I get what I want. I get what I love. It squares Pluto and Capricorn, which can affect real change in your actual life. Sextiles Mars and Gemini, which gives you more drive to pursue the things that you want and Jupiter in Aquarius. So other people will seem to hold some sort of promise. You may feel that um, it's important to listen to other people, that others can offer you opportunities which may be lucky and which will help your life get bigger and for it to expand. The moon then moves into Taurus later on in the day at 6.44 p.m. and that's based on UK time, British summer time. And again, don't get too hung up on the timings. Altogether, Monday the 12th, is a really fabulous day to pursue what you want in life. You have great confidence and the practical know-how to make real life changes in a practical, earthy sense. Listening to other people and sharing information will bring you good luck and good fortune. So put on your listening ears. You have great ability also to take charge of your work, your finances, your physical health, and your practical circumstances in things like moving, for example. Tuesday, the 13th of April, we've got the Sun in Aries forming a sextile with Mars in Gemini. So the Sun in Aries, we're at this time of the year, which is really about spring. You wouldn't know it looking here. It's covered in snow as well. But 
Astrologically and energetically, it's really about new beginnings and how can I use my strength and power to set goals and then to get those things done. Mars in Gemini, Mars, remember, is the principle, the, the male principle, masculinity, drive, what am I going to build? And Gemini is about communicating, having fun, um, expressing your own ideas and opinions and looking at other ways of doing things. So it's really empowering. Mars actually rules Aries. So with the sun, the center of our solar system, your solar plexus, the center of your solar system as such internally, are all very much focused on getting your way and making decisions for yourself. The moon in Taurus squares Saturn in Aquarius. So connecting with other people, talking to other people, educating yourself, learning, thinking about things and coming to your own conclusions, and most importantly, making up your own rules for your life and how you want to live it, give you back control in a practical sense. So it's really important to get clear on what it is you want, because you'll be able to implement those decisions really easily and quickly, and they have uh, an almost instant effect on your life. And the Taurus moon also conjuncts Uranus in Taurus. Uranus is the planet of the unexpected, the miraculous, and it's kind of like the tower in the tarot. That's how I see it. And you really have the opportunity to make massive real life changes. So on Tuesday, your confidence levels are at an all time high. You may feel like you're facing a little bit of resistance from your circumstances or other people and what they've decided is right for them. And that isn't going to put you off. It's actually going to encourage you to push even harder. So you're really, really certain in yourself. So that certainty and confidence is warranted. It's a good thing because you're really able to tweak your circumstances so that they suit you. And you're able to kind of get the best deal for yourself and to get things in the way that you want them to be. You know, if you're at a market or something, you can either just pay the price or you can haggle for the best possible price. And on Tuesday the 13th, you'll really be into that kind of vibe of haggling and getting things perfect for yourself. And it will, it will really pay off in your favor. On Wednesday the 14th of April, we've got Venus going into Taurus. Venus in Taurus is very much focused on the body, on your practical circumstances, sexuality, love, in a, in a practical, physical sense, and also changing your environment so that it suits you. So you're gonna feel creative. I The image I'm getting in my mind is the queen of pentacles in the tarot. It's really about nurturing your environment and making it beautiful. It's like having a green thumb and starting to garden and having all these beautiful flowers come out and being able to enjoy them. So your hard work actually pays off in the sense that you can beautify your surroundings and your environment. The Taurus moon, sex styles, Neptune and Pisces, so your imagination is really fired and will allow you to create even more beauty in the real world. It squares Jupiter in Aquarius. So it's like, thank you, your rules and your opinions are really interesting, but yeah, I'll think about those tomorrow maybe. <laughs> and it tries Pluto and Capricorn. So it's really all about rolling up your sleeves, getting things done in a real world sense, <clears throat> listening to your own ideas, and what you want things to be like, and and um, being really focused, you're not at risk of being distracted on Wednesday. So if you do want to learn from other people, and if you want to be super teachable, Monday and Tuesday are much better than Wednesday, because on Wednesday, you'll want to get busy in terms of doing things for yourself. With Venus being in Taurus, love is in the air on Wednesday, and the focus is on making things look more beautiful, and also relationships become much more important and you want to strengthen strengthen those and beautify them. So if you're constantly arguing with someone, you'll want to hash things out so that you can get back to a good place. Listening to your intuition, connecting with other people and connecting with others through work can really bring positive change to your career and can bring that love into your life. You've got to interact with people somehow for a new person to come into your life, right? You can't sit in a dark room by yourself with your phone switched off if you wanna meet new people or discover new things. So connect and interact with people and bring the positivity, it will pay off and you'll get positivity back. 
On Thursday, the 15th of April, we've got the moon going into Gemini. So things really lighten up. The moon is what gives you a sense of comfort. It's like, oh, I'm home, I can relax. And in Gemini, it's new ideas. You may feel really chatty and articulate. You are, may want to express yourself. And it's really, really important that you express yourself. That's like a homecoming. If I have to keep it, if I have to zip it, and if I can't talk about what I'm feeling, that might frustrate you a bit. The Gemini moon sextiles Chiron in Aries. So Chiron is the wounded healer. And really expressing what's going on with you is important and it will feel healing. And you'll have had this experience, you know, if you're talking about something that's happened to you, it can be very cathartic. And if you're talking to someone who cuts you off in the middle or he says, I don't want to hear this. I don't want to hear about your pain or your suffering. It upsets me. Then fine. That's, that's good for them that they don't want to hear it, but it will frustrate you again. Because getting it out and having someone else kind of bear witness to your experience is something that's very healing. And for me personally, that's always very healing. I do a lot of talking on the phone. Um, so if you are around people who can't let you finish a sentence or who don't want to hear what's going on for you, try and avoid that and really set yourself up in a position where you can share and where you can articulate what's going on. It's really, really, it's going to have a positive outcome because you can finish off that issue by talking about it. You can complete it and heal from it. If you're being interrupted and you can't share, then obviously you can't heal. The sun in Aries sextiles Jupiter in Aquarius. So that is nice because that allows you to really source ideas from other people. It really connects you nicely to other people and it returns that sense of if I listen, if I communicate, there's something inherently good that someone else can bring into my life. So you have a big appreciation and you have for other people and you have lots of time and patience for other people. So on Thursday, you're really interested in getting things done and taking care of yourself. Others may be instrumental in your personal healing. And like I said, it's a really good day to talk through any issues you have in all areas of your life and to get back on the same page with people. And that seems to be a theme, this, this theme of reconciliation and making things nice with others and really getting back to a good place. So you can um, improve your connection with people, places and things. You can improve all of those and the way you experience them. And ultimately it's about regaining an inner sense of balance. I like. On Friday the 16th, We've got the sun in Aries still. It squares Pluto and Capricorn. So Friday is really a day of, I, I've had enough. I don't want this anymore. I want my circumstances to change. I'm not happy in this situation. And I've been kind of ruminating about it and I've been ho-humming and I haven't been so decisive. That's over on Friday. You're super decisive. And if things don't suit you, you're going to be like, enough already. I want something different. Mars in Gemini trines Jupiter in Aquarius. So ask for help, ask for support. That will bring you good luck, good fortune. Don't feel like you have to do everything by yourself. You don't. The Gemini moon squares Neptune in Pisces. So, wow. So also you're very intuitive and creative on this day. And it trines Saturn in Aquarius. So that's interesting because the Gemini moon squaring Neptune in Pisces really puts the onus on you and says, my ideas, my intuition, the way I see things happening. But then the trine with Saturn in Aquarius adds another step. <clears throat> which says, will these ideas add something practical and secure to my life? Or am I just engaging in harebrained schemes that are never going to go anywhere? <laughs> so your, your intuition and your imagination are kind of grounded and based in real life things that you can actually do something with. So it really is the best of both worlds in the sense because you're thinking in an abstract way up here and you really have a lot of access to that. But you're able to sort the practical from the impractical and actually implement those things. So again, it's the Queen of Pentacles because if you see it, if you can visualize it in your mind's eye, you'll want to do something about it. You're not content with just brainstorming. You want to take action. So on Friday, you have an opportunity for change or to manifest things that you've been dreaming about for a while and you'll see how you can manifest them 
or how they can come to you in a real world setting. If you have the option of letting something pass you by or you can jump on it, please do jump on it, seize the moment. The opportunity is temporary and if you get busy fulfilling your own desires and dreams, you're really likely to fulfill one of your life's desires. So this is a huge day where you can really make something big happen. Hey, so maybe I'm moving personally on Friday the 16th. That'd be nice. Um, other people, again, may be very important in bringing information to you that you can use to your advantage. Certain rules and restrictions may seem more like options. This is a guideline, not a rule. Thank you. So you can break out of things that have held you back for a long time. But be careful not to go way overboard and to really break the rules in a serious way. That could be detrimental to you, you know. So if the police officer says something to you, then don't necessarily tell him exactly what you really think, but try and comply and go about your business. You, don't, you can't really change your life if you're in prison, can you? Saturday, the 17th of April, we've got loads going on. So we've got um, the moon being, uh, the moon connects to everything else, the personal planets to the outer planet. And you may feel a little bit overwhelmed on Saturday just because there's so much going on. Mars in Gemini trines Jupiter in Aquarius. So other people talking to people will bring me something good. It quincuxes Pluto and Capricorn. Not only will it bring me good things, it will affect real change. Mercury in Aries. First time Mercury in Aries, I think, is really making an appearance. Mercury is the communication planet. And in Aries, you're really sharp as a knife. Okay, there's no doubt. You know exactly what's right, what isn't right for you, where you want to be going and how you're going to get there. It makes you somewhat intolerant, I would say, but Jupiter in Aquarius mitigates that and you do have time for other people and, and to hear what they've got to say. Mars in Gemini also squares Pluto and Capricorn. So if you say certain things, they can have a really big impact. So in a negative sense, again, going to the police officer, if you tell him what you really think of his rules and his regulations, then it might have a bad outcome, as in you get a ticket or you get fined or something. Well, I mean, that's just one example. I'm not saying that you're going to get fined on Saturday the 17th. What I'm saying is that let's say you're in a friendship group and you're like, I've had enough of listening to this story. It's the 18th time I've listened to it. I'm going to tell you what I really think. If you're really harsh and clear about that, it could have the practical outcome that your friendship changes. On a plus side, if you are creative or if you want to um, change your job or move or alter circumstances by expressing something, it can connect you with another person or a thing. So I really like you. We've been seeing each other for five weeks and I really like you and I want this to become more serious or I've been thinking about changing my location, so I'm actually going to do it. Do you know of anywhere I could go? You know, for instance, other people um, could bring you good luck and fortune in that regard and affect real life change. The Gemini moon also sextiles Mercury in Aries and the sun in Aries. So uh, caution a little bit because you are likely to be a bit much when you express yourself. And sensitivity and compassion and really wrapping everything in a nice little gift box so that no one get a, gets offended. You're not interested in that. You're interested in getting your point across. And if you don't like it, I don't care. It's really quite tough. So if you do care, then make sure that you soften things a little bit so that other people aren't like, wow, what's going on here? The Gemini moon trines Jupiter in Aquarius and it conjuncts Mars in Gemini. So try and find a balance because you're supposed to share your truth because it will bring you other opportunities. So maybe if you do offend someone or if you do speak openly and honestly and someone doesn't like it, maybe they're not meant to like it. You can't please all the people all the time. The moon goes into Cancer later on in the day, so you become much more considerate later on on Saturday. So if you do have something difficult to share, leave it till later on because you'll naturally present it in a way that's more nurturing than you would earlier on in the day. The Cancer Moon also sextiles Venus and Taurus. So it's really interesting, by the end of the day, you're going away from logic and reason, in my opinion, and why, this, uh, why it's so important. And later on in the day, you're much more about, I love you and I wanna make you happy. 
But if you do need to stand up for yourself on Saturday, make sure you do it earlier in the day than later on. And again, this is a gradual shift. So it's not like at 8.25 p.m. you suddenly become nice and for the rest of the day you're a complete nightmare. No, not like that. All right. So it's really full on on Saturday. You may feel overwhelmed, bullied or unappreciated. There could be a lot of demands on you. So with that, if, you're, if people are making a lot of demands and you're feeling quite prickly, things can become volatile and combustible. So just be aware of that. Um, it's much more important on Saturday to stand your ground and to express yourself rather than to simply bow down and to take instruction. That's not going to go down very well with you. Doing it your way is lucky. So why wouldn't you do it your way? A problematic relationship could become a huge distraction and you may actually be misinformed either by accident or deliberately. So do your own research before taking advice and acting on it. So not only do you not like being instructed and told what to do, it could actually be detrimental to what you're planning and to a good outcome. So really make sure that you honor your own views and your own opinions. Those are the ones that are going to serve you most. Sunday, the 18th of April, we've got Mars and Gemini forming a quincux with Pluto and Capricorn. So you really have the potential to just blow things out of the water with the words that you're speaking. So exercise some restraint, especially when you're giving your opinions on other people's personalities, characteristics, something that they care about and have worked on for a long time. You know, if you're going to see your auntie and she loves to paint and you go over there and she's like, what do you think of my painting? I spent three days on it. And you're like, it's hideous. Stop painting. She, whether the painting is hideous or not, she's not going to appreciate it. And it's going to put a, a bit of a damper on your relationship. She'll be like, how rude. It, you know, the, the actual content becomes irrelevant. The focus then, if you're excessively honest and direct and negative, the focus will shift to your rudeness and your clarity, and that's not going to get you anywhere. So I'm not saying you should lie, but what I'm saying is that you could soften your opinion a little bit. And you don't have to say the work is hideous. You can say, hmm, interesting. However you put it, okay? You'll, you'll do the, you're probably more tactful than I am. So use your own advice and exactly listen to the astrology and listen to your guidance on how to deal with situation. No one else's, including mine. The sun in Aries conjuncts Mercury in Aries. So that focus on achievement and goals is really full on still and really, really strong. So get things done and take a couple of risks and say, these are my goals. These are my passions. I'm going to pursue them because that will serve you. The Cancer moon sextiles Uranus and Taurus. So there may be some changes in your personal life that cause you some discomfort. Squares Chiron. So it could be changes in your personal life that may feel like they rattle you a little bit, but ultimately they will be healing and they will have a good outcome. And a Queen Cux is Saturn and Aquarius. Okay, so this is interesting because you can make it nice. You can rebuild bridges. You can take care of other people. But again, if someone is kind of walking all over you, thinking, oh, you know, they'll accept it and won't say anything, it's not like that. So this is a bit more of a balanced day where you have to kind of navigate a little bit more carefully. Ultimately, the best thing about Sunday the 18th is that you find the solution to a particular problem and you find it easy to resolve as a result. So whatever is unresolved in your life or what is problematic, focus on that and you will find that balance and you will be able to resolve it. <clears throat> your confidence, again, is very, very high on Sunday, and you're able to express yourself really clearly. Great day. I think I've said enough about that. Use your common sense when expressing yourself very clearly. I mean, it's good for contracts and negotiations. It's not so good when you visit your aunt, for instance, who paints. Great day for drawing up a contract, writing, or teaching. Again, demands may be made on your time and energy, which ultimately can make you feel drained and unappreciated. So if you go out of your way to put your own priorities aside, make sure that's warranted and you're not just doing it because someone else wants you to. Being overly giving as well is likely to backfire on you. That's interesting. That's kind of like the saying, no good deed goes unpunished. So but don't be too saint-like on Sunday and don't try and make everyone else happy because one, it'll backfire and two, 
you're not using your own opportunity to progress in life. So you do have to, it, it will benefit you to deliberately find some balance on Sunday because there are lots of opportunities to kind of go off in the wrong direction. So even if you're nice and um, you try and help other people to the detriment of your own security, it's not going to work out and people may even call you ungrateful. A day where the tables are likely to be turned on you. So if you're doing something thinking I'm going to get a particular response, so I'm going to cook you all your meals on Sunday, breakfast, lunch and dinner, and I'm going to make it really nice because you'll be really grateful and you'll appreciate me. That's one of my love languages through food and cooking, taking care of other people. You may get the response that I'm not eating this. I don't like it. And of course, you're not going to enjoy that because you put so much time and effort into it. So a really interesting week. You can really, really grow in your relationships and learn about yourself. But ultimately, it's about your desires, moving ahead with them, making progress and changing your environment to make it suit your needs. So try and keep the focus on you and honor that. And don't get distracted by people pleasing or just being solely in service mode all week. It's not going to benefit you. It may even backfire. So that's what I get this week. I hope you have a wonderful time. If you would like a personal reading with me, please get in touch via my website, gregoryscott.com. I am, I am in the process of, of moving, obviously, but I'm here with Bob and Keith. So I am set up here with my laptops. So the readings are going ahead as usual. And um, that's not going to be disrupted. So if you do want a reading with me, then please just get in touch via the website. On the front page, click on book your reading to order your reading with me. I use astrology, tarot and numerology in my personal readings. If you have any questions about uh, your life purpose, or if you want to move, when would be a good time to move? Or where are good places to move? I did this for myself because if I look at your birth chart, I'm looking at the sky at the moment you were born and I'm on planet Earth looking up, right? Looking at what the stars were doing. <clears throat> the astrocartography reverses that and I position myself in the sky and I look at how the planets are moving over different parts of the Earth and it gives you an insight into what places are going to feel like for you. They may feel different for other people because their planets were in other places, but for you, a certain place will be ruled by Mercury, for instance, the communication planet. You'll find it easy to connect and communicate with people. Or it may be ruled by Jupiter, so that place holds a lot of inherent good luck for you. So the astrocartography, I love that because it really helps um, in terms of moving. And I've, I speak to quite a lot of people, and what I notice is that the most intuitive people often naturally end up in areas that really support them. Like, for instance, with me, Glastonbury, for me, is ruled by Jupiter, the lucky planet, Saturn, the planet of structure and security, and Mercury. So it did teach me a lot about myself. I did do a lot of communication. I did experience good things. I did feel grounded and settled. And I... I think that's really useful. Why would you go somewhere that's ruled by Black Moon Lilith and you're always just going to be, you know, hammered by your own ego? So that kind of thing really helps. Also, if you want to know more about yourself, what your strengths and weaknesses are, what's kind of destined for you in money and finance, love, romance, what you can do about that destiny, how you can work with it to change it, because it's not set in stone. You do have a choice. You can make things happen for yourself. And also... The progress chart, the transits, allow me to look at what's coming up for you in future, what the energies are like, what opportunities you're being offered. So that's why astrology is fabulous and great and such a useful tool. And then, like I said, I combine them with the numbers because that adds even more information and the tarot. Um, if you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and share the video online. Have a fabulous week and I'll speak to you next week. Oh, and make sure that you look at the video on the new moon in Aries for Monday the 12th of April because that is a great opportunity to really move ahead in your life. And also, if you want a final look at my flat in Glastonbury, that's obviously going to be the last time I have that as a background because someone else is in there now. I, I am a little bit gutted because I love that flat um, and I love Glastonbury. But 
when it's time to move on. I've always, I've always been very, I've always listened for that, you know, like, is it time to move on? Because I've lived everywhere. I've, I've lived in Australia and in South Africa and in England and in Amsterdam and in Germany and all over the place. And it is time for me to move on. Um, but when there are problems with housing or cars or practical things, me as a Virgo, you'd think I'd find that very easy, but I don't. I, I get a little bit like, oh, I'm actually homeless. <laughs> I'm not, but, it, you know, it can feel somewhat disconcerting for an earth sign to suddenly be uprooted because us earth signs, and Virgo is not even the, the, the one most affected by that. In my experience, Tauruses like change the least. And when our practical circumstances change and there's major upheaval, it can, it can cause a little bit of emotional upheaval, so to speak. <laughs> so have a wonderful week. Um, let me know on this video, because I'm going to sort out the ad thing on this video. Let me know if there is only one banner ad or if, if I need to look into it more. I think I know what I'm going to do to sort that out. But just let me know if it's worked, because I really don't want ads, for, uh, like that many ads on my videos. Okay, I don't. So have a great time and I'll speak to you next week. All the best. Mwah.